Welcome to Getting Started with App Service. I'm Ben Lambert, and I'll be your instructor for this course. A little about me, I'm a full-time instructor here at Cloud Academy, which I love because it allows me to do two of my favorite things, which are continuous learning and teaching. Before I was an instructor, I was working as a DevOps engineer for different development agencies. I've been fortunate to be able to work on all kinds of different projects, things such as basic websites, high-traffic HIPAA-compliant web apps, and web application penetration testing. I've spent a lot of time developing solutions for all kinds of different languages, frameworks, and cloud platforms, as well as implementing automated build and deployment pipelines. Over roughly the next hour and a half, my goal is to help you get up to speed with app service. So before we get started, there's a couple of questions I need to answer, which are, who is this course intended for, and what will be covered? This course is designed for developers, IT pros, operations engineers, or some sort of similar role. You're going to need to have some understanding of development and ideally familiarity with both Azure and Visual Studio. Now, what are we going to cover? I've broken this course into three sections. The first is going to be kind of a high level overview of app service. That'll include what app service is and an overview of web, mobile, and API apps, as well as an overview of logic apps, which are really cool. After that, the next section is going to cover how to get started developing apps that are going to live on app service. That's going to cover mobile development, not for mobile devices, but rather the mobile backend. We'll look at how to use code-free backends and the .NET options, as well as mobile authentication. Now, after the mobile stuff, we're going to move on to API apps, then logic apps, and then web apps. That'll wrap up the development focused sections of this course. And then we're going to head into the more operational tasks, which include things like deployment, monitoring, logging, and scaling. And then we're going to wrap up with some basic next steps. When it comes to creating courses, there's a lot of work that goes into thinking about what to include, what to leave out, and which rabbit holes to head down. So in the end, what really matters is that this helps you learn something new. And that's why I want to hear from you after you've watched this course. Good or bad, I'd love to hear your feedback because it's going to help me create better courses for you in the future. Okay, if you're still here and you're ready to get started, then I'll see you in the first lesson.